Hi, thanks for coming by the Bias booth at Music Mesa. I'm Zach Wheatcroft from Bias. I'm going to show you some highlights in Peak Pro 6. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look and get started. So the uh, first thing we're going to look at is one of the new DSP tools in Peak. It's called Perpetual Looper. And it's designed to uh, kind of just add into what Peak already does in terms of editing loops. Um, where other looping tools use uh, change of amplitude at the beginning and end of a loop, Perpetual Looper does an actual pitch change in this area before and after the loop and makes really nice sustained loops. So let's, let's play the sample we're going to try and loop. Um, so this section here, we want to make a nice sustaining loop. What we want to do is, so you can see here, as, as we're playing that loop, it kind of uh, fluctuates in, in level. It's not as smooth as it could be. So by selecting over the area of the loop and choosing Perpetual Looper from the DSP menu, I get a DSP window that comes up with lots of options. I'll choose the right frequency range for this. And now let's preview and hear what it sounds like. So it results in a much smoother loop. I can now process this, send it into my sampler, and when I hold down the appropriate key, it's going to loop smoothly forever. That's why we call it Perpetual Looper. So let's take a look at, uh, at another DSP tool. Um, Peak has recently been really popular uh, in the area of podcasting. Uh, it was voted best in show for the last couple of years at the Podcast and Portable Media Expo. So uh, we've added a few more tools. And let's take a look. So what we've got here, we've got a bit of a voiceover. And we want to add that into our finished podcast material. Um, so here's, here's my uh, intro. Okay, so let's go ahead and take that. We'll copy that. What we want to do is drop it into our, the rest of our content and have it automatically fade out the, the other content so we can hear the voiceover section. So we do that with a new voiceover ducking tool. So let's open that up. And what you have are various options here for how you're going to blend it in. So you can adjust attack and decay. And let's adjust the ducking amount here. So go to minus 12 and process and see how this works out. So in this area, you can see it just dropped in my bit of voiceover. Let's give it a little bit of pre-roll and see how that sounds. So that's cool. The one thing that makes this really handy, though, is when you have something like uh, this file where you have a kind of a canned intro and conclusion that you're going to use on, in every episode. It makes it really fast to add these in. So you select the whole file that's kind of like your template file, come over to your podcast content. And now, since we have uh, two sections of dialogue with silence between them, what it lets me do is uh, control the minimum amount of silence between duckings. Here I have more than one second. So what it means is that the background audio is going to come back up to its normal level after my intro. So let's try this. Uh, so we'll come in here, select, oops, let's undo. So we'll start right there and choose voiceover ducking, click OK. Okay, so here's what it's put in the beginning and then it's put in uh, the conclusion at the end and it's blended in really nicely. So let's hear how that end one sounds. On a personal note, I went to Catholic High School. I can tell you, let's get a bad rap. So, makes it real easy. When you're finished putting your podcast together, go to the file menu and choose Publish Podcast. Uh, Peak encodes as MP3, AAC, uploads to your server, so it acts as an FTP client in that, in that capacity, and creates an RSS feed so your user or your listeners can subscribe to your show in iTunes or another uh, podcast aggregator. Another new little feature that's handy is sending a track right into iTunes. So Peak and iTunes work a little more closely now. Since iTunes is such a great way to organize your music, you can now just drop a file from Peak into iTunes. You can take things from iTunes right into Peak uh, as a document or into a playlist. So another thing that's new is, well, the whole interface that we're looking at here is a new kind of a dark color. It can be shaded anywhere between completely white, completely black, or anywhere in between to suit your preferences. The other thing is uh, magnetic windows. So as I drag these windows around, they're snapping to a magnetic grid. 
and uh, we're still working on this. This version's not finished yet, so got a couple things to work on. Uh, uh, let's see. Another option we have here is cache and RAM. This is a really cool feature on systems where you have just loads and loads of RAM. Uh, when you're doing extensive uh, DSP processing, like change duration or change pitch, what happens is you're, you're initially reading the file into RAM and all your edits and all your processing that streams to and from the disk is happening in RAM. So there's the initial open and then there's the final save and that's the only two times Peak is ac accessing the hard drive and it makes DSP processing up to 500% faster. It's a really cool feature.